A historic and disproportionate number of women have left the workforce since the start of the pandemic. New studies are showing many more are still considering downshifting their career. Alicia Nieves shows us the long-term damage experts are fearing. So here are two of my, I don't know if you can see them, two of my girls. In addition to twin three-year-old girls, Ashley Stewart has a preschool-age son. The mother of three started this year as a part-time occupational therapist, excited though about growing her career. I had just found another position that I was going to start in part-time in addition to the one I had, and I was hoping to build my career with that and move up to um, like a heavier part-time or even a full-time position. But the pandemic hit and she, like many, had to reevaluate what was best for her family. I switched to doing just a couple of virtual sessions on my computer during the week and it ended up that it was just too much to handle with the kids here screaming in the background or climbing on me while I was trying. Um, so I ended up just stopping altogether. I was excited to be starting to work more and I'm sad that I'm not getting the opportunity. Ashley Stewart's decision has become a common one for women across the country. Just take a look at this data from the Department of Labor. It shows women are leaving the workforce at a rate four times higher than men. The number of women who have left is startling um, because at the beginning of the year, women made up, we were celebrating the fact that women were 50% of the workforce, so we've lost significant gains since then. Nicole Mason is the president and CEO of the Institute for Women's Policy Research. We can draw the direct line between the lack of childcare and daycare closures to women exiting. Experts like Mason are concerned if women continue to drop out of the labor force at this rate, a decade or more of women's equality and progress in the workforce could be erased. Employers have a role to play by making sure that their, their workplace policies are flexible, um, providing child care subsidies. Um, the federal government has a role to play by, um, you know, instituting a national care infrastructure that will do more to keep women in the workforce by making sure that they have child care and other supports. Steps that could help women again move forward in the workforce instead of back. I'm Alicia Nieves reporting.